Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. If you're a fan of dinosaurs or paleontology in general, then this is a wonderful time to be alive. Not only are you getting awesome, lifelike portrayals of extinct animals in video games like Prehistoric Kingdom, but also in the new hype train paleo documentary, Prehistoric Planet. For those of you unfamiliar, first, which rock have you been living under? And second, this is a brand new documentary on Apple TV Plus that captures the everyday lives of dinosaurs along with other Mesozoic reptiles at the end of the Cretaceous. Now, to not confuse you viewers at home, this is not one of my accuracy reviews. That day will come eventually, but not the day. Instead, this will play out like a regular movie review of mine where I discuss the positives and negatives. Yes, there are negatives. As much as I love dinosaurs, I'm not about to fangirl. No, instead I'll try to remain objective. Accuracy will play a role because Prehistoric Planet is an education-based program, unlike, say, King Kong, which was purely made for entertainment. Alright, so without further delay, let's dig this up. For the past two weeks, the internet has been completely enamored with Prehistoric Planet, and for good reason. Well, really the hype has been ongoing since the first trailers dropped, but the new series has definitely lived up to expectations. So much talent, hard work, and modern science came together so dang well. Where do I even start? Um, okay, Prehistoric Planet looks phenomenal. Directors Adam Valdez and Andrew R. Jones found such a great balance between making the shots look natural, like we're looking at actual animals, and looking gorgeous. This is eye candy the series. So many shots are just drop dead beautiful. Credit also has to go to Moving Pictures Company, which had practice with making photorealistic animals in the past with the Jungle Book and Lion King remakes. Well, the 2019 Lion King sucked, but at least the animals looked realistic to a fault, but Prehistoric Planet isn't a cash grab musical where the subjects need to talk, sing, and dance so it doesn't fall apart at the seams. Instead, every single prehistoric creature looks hyper-realistic. Jon Favreau just redeemed himself here. This is the closest anyone's ever gotten to bringing non-avian dinosaurs to life. Every creature, every movement, and every environment looks so lifelike. If someone showed this to a gullible kid and told them it was real footage, I have no doubt that sucker would believe them. Now, not just the special effects, but the animal designs alone look stunning. Concept art was created by Jellyfish Pictures, which may sound familiar due to their work on the other popular docuseries, Planet Dinosaur. Big names in paleo art such as Mark Witten, Scott Hartman, and David Krentz helped make every design look as accurate as possible to our current understanding of paleontology, but Darren Nash was the main consultant here. He even shows up in the bonus content to explain the science behind the show. Every appearance is totally believable. Prehistoric Planet contains many of the best portrayals of its animals ever put to screen. I've sifted through way more paleo documentaries than any sane individual should, so I can honestly say that so far, Best Velociraptor, Best Therizinosaurus, Best Dinochirus, Best Tarbosaurus, Best Mosasaurus, Best Mononychus, and the list goes on. But not only is it accurate, the creators are willing to insert some speculation here and there too. We don't know everything about these animals, and there are some things that their fossils just can't tell us or haven't told us yet. So there's a good amount of healthy speculation, not just throwing random crap at the screen, but things that might be believable, like the Carnotaurus's blue arms. So much passion went into these depictions. It's enough to make a grown man cry. Another easy victory royale here are the behaviors. The filmmakers knock this out of the park. Oh goodness, there are far too many shows that are just about dinosaurs fighting, roaring, basically just being non-stop action machines. We're brought back to the walking with days, where they're portrayed as simply animals that did all the things animals do. How many times do you walk outside and see bears and cougars battling to the death for the sake of bloodshed? I'd imagine never, so why are dinosaurs shown like this? My two favorite segments of the show were just the Mononychus scurrying around for insects and a Dinochirus scratching itself. That's it. There's no epic Tarbosaurus fight sequence. No, it attracts mosquitoes and needs a good scratch. Actually, now that I mention it, Tarbosaurus never kills anything. It snaps out of Velociraptor for getting too close, but this apex predator spends its time chilling. I love it. 
He's just standing there, menacingly! There's a beauty in the simplicity. It's animals living their lives, not engaging in super epic showdowns. This helps make everything feel more real. Even the typical tropes like fighting and hunting are changed up to feel fresh. Instead of theropods fighting, we see sauropods. Although the Changzhaosaurus has a more typical hunt, it fails at first like most predators. Then other times we see hunts depicted like no other. The Nanuksaurus are caught in a stalemate in a blizzard with Pachyrhinosaurus, and a Truodontid uses fire like modern birds of prey to scare its victims. Excellent stuff. I never expected to see Stalingrad depicted in a dino dock. Even with the mundane, David Attenborough's wonderful voice makes everything enjoyable. I'm so glad this dude has sworn off retirement. Even at 96, he's still gracing our screens with his presence. And finally, of all composers, we get the legendary Hans Zimmer. While I wouldn't put his musical scores here on par with the Dark Knight trilogy, it's still something to behold. Oddly enough, the bit that stood out to me the most was during the plant battle as they compete to inhabit a new clearing. Even in a show with the great Tyrannosaurus and giant sauropods, he still went hard on scoring scenes for plants. What a Chad move. Okay fanboys and fangirls out there, don't attack me for pointing out a few problems. Nothing is perfect, there's always room for improvement. Sometimes you gotta work it again and again till you get it right. Prehistoric Planet is super accurate in general, but does contain some flaws. David Attenborough clearly states in the intro that what we're seeing occurred at the very end of the Cretaceous, 66 million years ago. However, some creatures that didn't live at this time show up, like the earlier Velociraptor, Dreadnoughtus, and Antarctopelta. Again, this isn't an accuracy review, so there's no need to touch on every detail, but it's worth mentioning that this show doesn't perfect the science. It also gets repetitive sometimes. Several segments play out similarly with its reptiles competing for mates or trying to impress potential mates. Like, alright, if I wanted to watch mating constantly, there are websites for that. I don't need a naughty T-Rex scene. The last negative I have is with the structure. Every episode is made up of a series of shorter scenes that take place in different regions with different subjects. I noticed some of you in the comments had a problem with this, and I'm inclined to agree. This format tends to break the immersion, and while it's not that big a problem for me, who's already familiar with these animals, it certainly could throw off a newcomer who's just learning about them. For each new scene, they'd have to keep up with the changing environments and new subjects. The typical Dino Doc episode style probably would have worked better with every part following a few animals in the same environment. The hard work is already done, since all the animals necessary, along with their habitats, are already made. Just reformat it into a Montana episode, then Mongolia, then Alaska, then North Africa, then Hateg. There. Problem solved. Overall, it's easy to tell that Prehistoric Planet was made by an extraordinarily talented team that was very passionate about their work. The sheer amount of effort speaks for itself, both in the science and entertainment departments. Although not perfect, each of the five episodes brings so much content to appreciate. So whether you're a die-hard paleo nerd or a relative newcomer, I highly recommend this show. Everyone of all ages from all walks of life can find enjoyment here. An accuracy review will come one day, but as a series, it's great. A new standard has been set for every future documentary. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.